Well, you know, I guess what they have in their favor is years of doing it, and we're just now getting into it. But for a while there, uh, uh, I was uh, involved with that uh, that era of uh, of the uh, they used to call them black exploitation. I did the Dolom Dolomite movies. Yeah. Did you ever hear about Dolomite Pretty movies? Much. Right. Well, this was filmed, and, and it was a commercial uh, basis. You know, we're looking at you know uh, doing products that. The, the community people want to see in the community, whatever. Um, I'm just wondering what is it that we have to do to uh, develop the awareness of the uh, the production ideas that producers like you are trying to get over, so that we could play videos without having the repercussion of the people fact fact factions in the community, people in the community. I think we should put our foot down. Because a lot of a lot of us blacks don't know how much power we have, mm -hmm. you know, and we should use that power and not let others intimidate us. Well, I think by you coming out and expressing this to people and uh, being a spokesman to this, uh, I think we should have more of it because then the people can know where you're coming from. In other words, you are a commercial businessman and you're looking to make dollars from your artistic uh, value in records and videos and upcoming motion pictures and is all part of the uh, dollars like Spike Lee right. is out there making money but you're doing it in this form you know it's a money-making thing but sometimes people out there confuse the money-making side by uh, with uh, people that are just uh, uh, revolutionaries with a message and I think most of the hardcore videos come across that way, like they're revolutionary instead of entertainers. Right. Okay. Um, it, what do you say on that? Is that right or wrong? Oh. Uh, okay. uh, come on now, say something. <laughs> now, are we <laughs> revolutionaries? Yeah, <laughs> are, we are. Or entertainers? I think we are all of them. Hmm? Everything. Everything. You're revolutionaries and up to make some money off of it. You're not just recording videos or, or records, you know, just for the non-commercial value of it. Right. That's right. right. Okay. What do you have as a message out there to the youngsters that's watching this show right now? Let me see. You know, we're going, we're going through a lot of changes out there. and. And uh, we see, like, the Rodney King situation that in the community we see L.A. burning down. We see all the time the murders and the shootings, the dope situations in right. the community. Now, where uh, is there any hope for our kids now? I mean, in the future, I mean, uh, what, what do we have for I mean, from your standpoint? Well, the murders and all the drive-by shootings and the drug dealings and all that, it's like us blacks don't have the boats to bring drugs here and don't have, you know, the, the, the power to get everything over here. I figure, see, see, this is one thing how they can stop everything is by legalizing everything. And if it's legal and you could get it and don't have to really pay nothing for it or try to get it, it'll stop a lot of that. Killings and murders and everything else. Well, you know, uh, actually, there's been a lot of advocates to that statement that are that believe in uh, what you're saying, you know. And I think that, um, but if you stop that, you know, it's just like uh, uh, there's a lot of people who are getting paid that wouldn't get paid on a higher level. You know, unfortunately, on our level, you know, until we can develop an economic base where we can start making something and and uh, having other areas of uh, people working, just like uh, coming up and being an entertainer. You know, that's one area. Uh, you know, you have a lot of kids looking out either to come out in the, um, well, uh, you know, the, the world of the, uh, the white collar workers or be an entertainer, sports or whatever. That's the only way to get out of the ghetto, they figure, you know. But as uh, far as the drug dealing, you know, I guess, you know, I look at it as, you know, there's families got to be fed and whatever. I'm not advocating it, but it's a matter, it's a reality. If you take away the jobs, or well, how the person going to feed their family and whatever? So you got to look at all those different directions. I look at it in a fashion that we have to really uh, start thinking more. And I, I'm looking at a message, uh, even from us, in the standpoint of saying, let's develop other areas of people able to make money. 
you know, so that they won't be dealing in those areas. Is that right? That's right. I don't want to take it to a bit. I'm doing all the talking now. You're sitting back there. I know you. <laughs> but um, uh, for you as an example, how did you get into this music industry? I mean, what prompted you getting into it? Well, let me see. Because most people thought you were the street person out there, you know, yeah. fighting the battles in the street, you know, with the uh, gangs and whatever. Same thing that we just was talking about. Uh, and something came in your life, said, well, okay, we're going to do the, a different twist to it now. So I decided to do something else because most of my friends are either dead or in jail. So I didn't either want, either want to end up like them. So I figured I would do something that's legal. And this record business to me was something legal. So in this area, you got into the music business. Did, um, um, was it anyone special that uh, launched your career, record label? Someone saw your talents or what? No, not really. Basically, I did... Uh, a lot of it on my own, mm -hmm. like sold records out of my car and everything. And then I ended up getting deals and going other places, getting other deals, and then it just took off. You have to be a lawyer for your lawyer and doctor for your doctor. <laughs> you have to do all of that yourself, and you have to know how to wheel and deal in this day and age, you know, or else you get the short end of the stick. Is that right? Okay, now, um, what about your, your group? Look like everybody from your group, uh, NWA, has now become single artists themselves and pretty big. Uh, are you still friends with uh, your group? A uh, couple of them. Ice Cube, MC Ren, and Yella. Okay, what about the other one? Who? <laughs> what are you talking about? All right. <laughs> okay. I'm with the guy that was... Dr. Dre, yeah. that was, you remember that group, the World Class Wrecking Crew? Yeah. That wore lipstick, stick, lace, biker shorts, and, you know, no, no, ruffles, oh, no. eyeliner. Oh, yeah? Yeah, if you go look back, like, uh, to his old albums before, where he did songs like The Cabbage Patch, The Fly, He's Bionic, Dr. Dre, 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 uh, and you look back at him in his doctor suit, you could tell where he originally came from. See, if you look back at me, you could, when well, my beginning, I did the boys in the hood. So I was cruising down the street in my 6'4". So it's 93 now, and Dre is all of a sudden cruising down the street in his 6'4 now. Mm -hmm. So I figured he like a 93 wannabe. Because back then, he did all this cabbage patch stuff and dancing and wore the lipstick and the doctor outfits with the stethoscope and did all this uh, techno music. He was never really from the streets. And I figured, like... What are you talking about? He said he's got a song I call G Thing. I figured G, G stuff come from the concrete, and that's the streets, which he was never from the streets. Okay. Only reason my people affiliate him with the streets is through me. Mm -hmm. So it's like, where we from Compton and Long Beach, they don't get along with each other. See, like people in Compton really don't, you know, um, claim Dre as being from Compton, and they don't claim Snoop from being from Long Beach. So it's like, it's a little, whole little gimmick he got. It's not real. Well, at least you put the word Compton on the map, the city of Compton on the map. Right. Yeah. Um, anyway, is there going to be a reunion of the fellows that you can get along with? Of course. We're talking right now. All right. Working on that. Doing and that'll be sharp to do something like that. You have another video out at the same time as Sniper, don't you? Yeah, only if you want it. Okay. And was that a backup in case we didn't play Sniper? No, that was the original, uh, the first video, and that was, like, produced by Naughty by Nature, mm -hmm. and that was the first single from that uh, Maxi single.